What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here. In this question, we're gonna do another example where we have to use the definition of a derivative to find f prime x when f of x is equal to x plus three over the square root of x. So we know the uh, definition of a derivative is limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now, what we can do is we can use this function how it's given, but then it's gonna get pretty messy. So watch what happens if I do that. If I plug in x plus h for all the x's, I'll have x plus h plus three over the square root of x plus h minus f of x, which was x plus three over the square root of x, all over h, like that. And then what would happen is you would have to rationalize this numerator here. And so you'd have to multiply this by x plus h plus 3 over the square root of x plus h plus x plus 3 over the square root of x. So we would just change that term in the middle. And if we multiply the numerator by that, we would have to also multiply the denominator by that same term. Right, so it's just gonna get pretty crazy. We'll have this x plus h three squared minus x plus three squared. These aren't gonna be common denominators and we're gonna have to combine them. So we're gonna have to multiply the numerators by even more stuff. It's just gonna be a lot of algebra to do it this way. You can, uh, I'm gonna do it a different way. You could try it this way if you want and see if you get the same answer. But what I actually recommend doing first just based on this function that we're given, notice that we can split this function up. Notice there's one term in the denominator, so we can rewrite this as x over the square root of x plus three over the square root of x. And x over the square root of x, that's like x to the power of one over x to the half. Notice these are the same their exponents with the same base, so we could subtract the exponents. One minus a half is just a half. So here we would just end up with square root of x, or x to the power of a half, plus three over root x. So this and this are the exact same function. Square root of x plus three over root x is the same as x plus three all over the square root of x. And now what we can do is we can actually look at these separately, find the derivative separately. So notice that f of x, okay, this is f of x over here. Notice f of x, it's basically two functions added together, right? We got this g of x here, one function plus h of x. And so whenever you have that, two functions being added together to give you this function, the derivative of that whole function, that main function, is just gonna be the derivative of this function plus the derivative of that function. And so what I recommend doing is finding this first and then finding that and then just adding them. So you're gonna to have to do this process twice but I feel like it's gonna be easier than trying to combine it with this function where we had that crazy algebra that was coming up that I showed you. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take g of x, which is the square root of x, and I'm gonna find the derivative of that. So if I change everything here, we'll have g prime x equals the limit as h approaches zero of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. And so g of x is this square root of x. So we would have the limit as h approaches zero of the square root of x plus h minus g of x, which is just the square root of x all over h. Rationalize this all over square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. And then uh, what's gonna happen here? We'll have um, this multiplied by its conjugate, we just have to multiply the n term, so we'll have x plus h minus x in the uh, numerator all over, let's keep these two terms separate, so we'll have this h 
square root of x plus h plus square root of x, like that. And then notice we'll have this x minus x. Those cancel out, so we're just left with an h up, up top after simplifying, and then the h's cancel out, so we're just left with a 1 up top. And now we could plug in 0 for h, so we'd have 1 over square root of x plus the square root of x. These are like terms. They just simplify to 1 over 2 root x. So that there is the derivative for that. So when g of x is the square root of x, g prime of x is 1 over 2 root x. And now we would do the same thing for this other function, uh, h of x. h of x in this case is equal to 3 over root x. All right, so this one's going to be tougher than the g of x, but I still feel like it's going to be easier than what we had up before. So h prime x would be h of x plus h minus h of x. Um, and so we'll have limit as h approaches 0. h of x plus h, we would plug in x plus h for this x over here. So we'd have 3 over square root of x plus h minus h of x is just 3 over root x all over h. And now this we would multiply by the conjugate, so it would be 3 over square root of x plus h plus 3 over square root of x. And then we've got to multiply the bottom as well by 3 over square root of x plus h plus 3 over square root of x like that. And then what's going to happen is these ends you can multiply together. 3 times 3 is 9. Square root of x plus h times the square root of x plus h is x plus h minus 9 over x. And then this is still going to be all over this h times 3 over root x plus h plus 3 over root x. So quite a bit, bit of algebra with this h of x, uh, but again, I feel like it's less algebra than if you were to do it the, uh, the other way. And so I'm going to erase all of this here for now. Just to give myself some more room here. And um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this numerator and I'm going to simplify it on the side. I'm going to uh, take these two fractions, combine them into one fraction. So we'll have 9 over x plus h minus 9 over x. This we multiply by x, meaning the top we multiply by x. This x we multiply by x plus h. Multiply that by x plus h. So we'd end up with 9x minus 9 bracket x plus h all over x bracket x plus h. Distribute that negative 9 inside the bracket. The 9x's will cancel out and we'll just be left with negative 9h over x bracket x plus h. So this expression here in brackets simplifies to that, negative 9h over x bracket x plus h. So knowing that, if we continue this up here, um, we'll have the limit as h approaches 0. This we simplify to what we had, negative 9h over x, x plus h. Now we are dividing by this h here, which is like dividing by h over 1, which is like multiplying it by 1 over h. So I'm actually going to put that 1 over h up top there, over 3 over square root of x plus h plus 3 over square root of x, like that. Right, so this and this are the exact same thing. And now notice those h's cancel out, and now we could plug in 0 for h. So we would end up getting negative 9 over x squared in that numerator over, this is going to go to 0, so we'll, we'll have 3 over root x plus 3 over root x. They already have a common denominator. So you could add them. It would just be 6 over root x. So that 
a fraction divided by another fraction is like that first fraction multiplied by the reciprocal of this fraction. So x to the power of a half over 6. I changed that uh, square root of x to x to the power of a half. And then notice the negative 9 over 6, that simplifies to negative 3 over 2. And then x to the power of a half over x to the power of 2, it's, um, we could simplify those, they're common base, so we could subtract the exponents. So 1 half minus 2 gives us negative 3 over 2. 1 half minus 2 gives us uh, negative 1.5 or negative 3 over 2. So it's like x to the power of negative 3 over 2, which is the same as negative 3. If we bring this down to the denominator, x to the power of positive 3 over 2. All right, so now that is the derivative, remember, of h prime x. And now what we can do is we can just combine those because, remember, this f of x, we broke down into two functions, square root of x plus 3 over root x. And so the derivative of this entire function is going to be, remember we let this be g of x, which is g, so the derivative is gonna be g prime x, which is, uh, we got one over two root x, plus the derivative of this, we just did and ended up getting that. And there's a minus here, so instead of putting a plus, there'd be a minus three over two x to the power of three over two, like that. And so that ends up being your final derivative for this function. So again, lots of algebra. And what we did initially was we took this function, split it up into two separate functions, and then found the derivative of each of these two functions separately, and then just added those derivatives at the end.